de novo procedure computes two estimates of population variance sigma square, MSTR and MSE, and MSTR is expected to be larger than MSE when the null is false, but equal to it if the alternative is true. Taking the ratio with MSTR in the numerator is just an F statistic. If the null hypothesis is true, the sampling distribution of the ratio of the MS MSTR and MSE is an F distribution with numerator degrees of freedom equal to K minus 1 and denominator degrees of freedom equal to NT minus K. If the variance amongst the K sample means is large, the F stat is inflated because the mean square root of treatments overestimates population variance sigma square. Hence, if the F stat is too large, mean squared due to treatments is larger than mean squared due to error. And so we have to reject the null hypothesis that all population means are equal. Also, if the F stat is approximately equal to 1, mean squared due to treatments is approximately equal to mean squared due to error. And so we cannot reject the null hypothesis that all population means are equal. Since F values are ratios of variances, and variances are squared standard deviations, the F distribution is over all positive values. The mean of the F distribution is approximately equal to 1. The critical value of this test, F alpha, is found in the F distribution table. In column corresponding to the degrees of freedom used to compute the mean square due to treatments, which is also known as the numerator degrees of freedom, because the mean square due to treatments is in the numerator of the F stat. And in the row corresponding to significance level alpha and degrees of freedom used to compute the mean square due to error, which is also known as the denominator degrees of freedom because mean square due to error is in the denominator of the F statistic. The critical value F alpha splits the distribution such that the probability of being greater than this number is equal to alpha, the level of significance, the red area. The probability of being less than the critical value is equal to 1 minus alpha. The critical value also defines the do not reject the null and reject the null regions. If the F stat is in the reject region, the F stat is too large, which suggests that the mean square due to treatments is greater than mean square due to error. Hence, the null hypothesis is probably not true, meaning we can reject it. If the F stat is in the do not reject region, F stat is too small, which suggests that the mean square due to treatments is probably equal to the mean square due to error. Hence, the null hypothesis is probably true, meaning we cannot reject it. The total sum of squares denoted SST divided by its degrees of freedom denoted the overall total number of observations in all samples minus one is the overall sample variance that would be obtained if we treated the entire set of observations as one data set. With the entire data set being considered as one sample, the total sum of the squares is given by the following. This complex equation can be written more compactly as this equation, which can be rewritten more simply as just the sum of squares due to treatments plus the sum of squares due to errors. 
After computing the sum of squares due to treatments and sum of squares due to error, the noble table for testing the equality of means is completed by summing the sum of squares due to treatments and sum of squares due to errors. Summing the numerator degrees of freedom and denominator degrees of freedom. Dividing the sum of squares due to treatments by the numerator degrees of freedom equals the mean square due to treatments. Dividing the sum of squares due to errors by the degrees of freedom the denominator degrees of freedom equals the mean square due to error. Dividing the mean square due to treatments by the mean square due to error equals the F statistic. Again, if the F statistic is big, we reject the hypothesis that population means are all equal. If the F stat is small, we cannot reject the hypothesis that population means are all equal. The above ANOVA procedure is an example of a completely randomized design. It is applicable when treatments are randomly assigned to the experimental units. And is useful when the experimental units are homogeneous. In the following example, Janet Reed would like to know if there is any significant difference in the mean number of hours worked per week for department managers at her three manufacturing plants, one in Buffalo, Pittsburgh, and Detroit. A simple random sample of five managers from each of the three plants was taken, and the number of hours worked by each manager for the previous week is shown on the next slide. Conduct an F test at the 5% level of significance. Note, the number of populations, or treatments, is equal to 3, and all the samples are of size 5. The number of hours worked by the five managers from the Buffalo plant are 48, 54, 57, 54, and 62 hours per week. The five managers from the Pittsburgh plant worked 73, 63, 66, 64, and 74 hours per week. The five managers from the Detroit plant worked 51, 63, 61, 54, and 56 hours per week. The sample sizes are N1 equals 5, N2 equals 5, and N3 equals 5. The sample means are X bar 1 equals 55, X bar 2 equals 68, and X bar 3 equals 57. The sample variances are S1 equals 26 hours, S2 equals 26.5 hours, and S3 equals 24.5 hours. In step 1, we state the hypotheses. The hypothesis is mu1 equals mu2 equals mu3. The alternative hypothesis is not all the population means are equal, meaning one stands out. At least one stands out where mu1 is the mean hours worked by all managers at plant 1. mu2 is the mean number of hours worked by all managers at plant 2. mu3 is the mean number of hours worked by all managers at plant 3. In step 2, we determine the critical value of this one tilt test, which is found in the F distribution table. In the row corresponding to the denominator degrees of freedom, equal to 12, and significance level equal to 0.05. And in the column corresponding to the numerator degrees of freedom equal to 2. Hence the critical value F alpha is equal to 3.89. In step 3 we compute the mean square due to treatments. First we have to compute the grand mean by summing the three sample means and dividing by 3 which equals 60 hours per week. The sum of squares due to treatments is equal to sample size N1 times the first square deviation from the grand mean, 55 minus 60 squared, plus 
sample size n2 times the second square deviation from the grand mean, plus sample size 3 times the third square deviation from the sample mean, from the grand mean. The sum equals 490 hours squared. The mean square due to treatments is equal to the sum of squares due to treatments divided by its degrees of freedom, 2, which is equal to 245 hours squared. In step 4, we compute the mean square due to error. First, we have to compute the sum of squares due to error, which is equal to sample size n1 minus 1 times sample 1's variance, plus sample size n2 minus 1 times sample 2's variance, plus sample size n3 minus 1 times sample 3's variance, which equals 308 hour squared. The mean square due to error is equal to the sum of squares due to error divided by its degrees of freedom, which is equal to 25.667 hours squared. In step 5, we compute the F statistic, which is the ratio of the MSTR and the MSE. Since the mean square due to treatments is 245, 5 hours squared, and the mean squared due to error is 25.667 hours squared, the F statistic is equal to 9.55. To construct the ANOVA table, first record the sum of squares due to treatments and sum of squares due to error. Next record the degrees of freedom for the sum of squares due to treatments and sum of squares due to error. Recall, the mean square due to treatments is equal to the sum of squares due to treatments divided by its degrees of freedom, which is 245 hours squared. The mean square due to error is equal to sum of squares due to error divided by its degrees of freedom, which is 25.667 hours squared. Summing the sum of squares due to treatments and sum of squares due to errors equals the total sum of squares, which is 798 hours squared. Sum of the numerator degrees of freedom and denominator degrees of freedom equals the degrees of freedom for the total sum of squares, which is equal to 14. And dividing the mean square due to treatments by the mean square due to error equals the F stat, which is 9.55.